Hello, everyone. I'm George Falford, and uh, today I would like to talk about, talk about uh, some potential applications of off-chain computation in the light client ecosystem. Uh, maybe you have already heard uh, about off-chain computation and interactive validation. These are really promising and exciting new concepts, but the basic idea is uh, really simple. Um, if there's a complex but deterministic calculation that would be too expensive to directly process on the blockchain, it is still possible to have uh, multiple parties evaluate the same function, check the results against each other, and uh, only start an interactive validation process that could prove one of the parties wrong if uh, there's a disagreement, and this validation process can be realized inside a contract, so eventually the results of such a calculation can be canonized on the blockchain. Uh, this technology can be used to process large amounts of external data, but, uh, uh, which could be located anywhere, like a swarm. But uh, in this case, I would like to present some use cases where the input data is a blockchain itself, either the same chain where the validation happens or can be another one too. These use cases are mostly related to event filtering. In a current single blockchain scenario, in event filtering is quite simple. We have the contract log events and bloom filters, but uh, in order to uh, do a full history search with good performance, we already needed some uh, clever performance optimizations, which I will shortly talk about. Later, I would also like to talk about uh, the future challenges of uh, event filtering with light clients when uh, we are going to have uh, sharding and uh, state channel technologies like Plasma or Polkadot, and uh, eventually we'll end up with a massive hierarchy of chains and uh, massive amounts of cha chain data, and we will definitely need some uh, sophisticated filtering methods to make sense of all this data. But first, let me just quickly talk about uh, the current filtering system in the Coethereum client. Uh, you probably know Bloom filters, they are really simple data structures, just a 2048-bit long bit vector, and uh, for every log, address, and topic, three quasi-random bits are set, and if someone else is looking for the same events later, they can just check for these three bits if they are set, and only check the block receipts if these bits, bits are set. And this is already a good performance improvement compared to checking all the block receipts in the entire history, but still, uh, Checking, checking them means that you have to read the entire header chain, which is already more than two gigabytes, and uh, it was kind of slow even on a full node. And uh, with the light client, it is uh, even worse because uh, uh, downloading the and keeping the entire header chain locally is something that uh, some devices just don't want to do, cannot do, and uh, that's also why we implemented the checkpoint syncing so that uh, we can avoid downloading all the headers, but then we don't have all the Bloom filters either. So we needed some uh, clever, clever data structure, and uh, what we did is uh, we take a, t took uh, fixed length sections of consecutive blocks and uh, put the Bloom filters of them under each other. Imagine that there's a bitmap, and uh, you can see on the left blue box, then when doing a sim simple search, we are interested in three vertical columns in this bitmap, which is still, if you read this, you had to read all the Bloom filters from this because uh, it's uh, not tightly packed. The interesting bits are not tightly packed together, but if we do a 90 degrees rotation of this bitmap, we will get uh, horizontal lines. Horizontal lines will be interesting for us, just three lines out of the 2,000, so we only have to read those, and uh, this optimization already yields a two or three orders of magnitude performance improvement in log searching. And uh, it also works nicely with the light clients. By the way, uh, this requires the second version of the LES protocol, which has just recently been merged into the Go Ethereum code base. And, uh, and it also works very nicely. It can filter the entire log history in a full sec few seconds. But there was another problem we had to solve in order for this to work, namely that these data structures are not a part of the consensus. So we needed some, so light clients cannot directly validate it, even though light servers can generate and serve it. And uh, in order to solve this, uh, we created a special try, the Bloom filter try and organize all the bit vector in this try so that the light client only needs to know the 
uh, root hash of the Bloom filter try and use Merkle proof to validate everything else. Of course, the question still remains how a light client uh, can trust the Bloom filter uh, root hash, Bloom filter try root hash, and uh, well, currently we are doing checkpoint syncing with hard-coded uh, trusted checkpoints, which is only a temporary solution, and right now the uh, Bloom filter try is also hard-coded into these checkpoints, but uh, uh, soon we would like to get rid of hard-coded checkpoints and uh, use trustless uh, validation of, of checkpoints. And uh, in order to do this, we need to somehow validate the Bloom filter try on-chain, and this is where off-chain validation comes into the picture, because all the light servers know the input data, which is the header chain, and this is a deterministic calculation that the, they do anyway, so servers can send uh, the root hash, new root hashes to a judge contract uh, and uh, only do validation if necessary. If a root hash remains unchallenged on the chain for quite a long enough time, then the clients can trust it. Of course, we still also need some uh, uh, security deposits and uh, in other incentives to make the system work, but that's also part of the plan. Now, let me also talk about uh, how I imagine the future challenges the chain, massive chain hierarchies and scaling uh, will mean for light clients and what <coughs> we can do about it. Uh, here's an example situation where there's a user who wants to observe a subset of the chain, chain hierarchy, which may, could still be a quite a large subset. Right now, our imaginary user uses a decentralized marketplace which uh, has uh, multiple state channels for listing different market offers, like one for listing crypto versus fiat money trade offers, another for listing second-hand cars, and a local news service which has a state channel for uh, uh, weather alerts, and the user wants to <coughs> observe these chains and uh, get notified about uh, uh, interesting results. And the filtering criteria for interesting uh, events uh, might be even more complex than uh, what could be realized with our current simple uh, log address and topic systems. So it would be great if uh, clients could uh, uh, somehow get some help for uh, filtering. Also, it's uh, possible with some state channel technologies that, you low that use low redundancy, that uh, their secu security model is based on an assumption that uh, some interested parties actually do validate the chain, and that's also something that like clients cannot do, so they would also require some uh, uh, insurance to be able to trust uh, the validity of these chains. I think uh, it is possible that uh, they can uh, they hire light servers to do all of this for them. And uh, also, it would be uh, even better and still possible to build a filtering and observing hierarchy for each client who is run running complex applications. This hierarchy could run on multiple light servers and uh, deliver just the uh, interesting uh, results from the entire work computer to our clients who can then run with very low resource requirements. Uh, I would like to sh show. To, I would like to show how I think this is possible. So let me just uh, define two very simple primitives that could achieve this. One of them is called the chain filter. A chain filter is a deterministic set of operations performed on an input blockchain, and uh, it is specified preferably in a virtual machine that is suitable both for uh, uh, just-in-time compilation and interactive validation. And a chain filter can have its own state, but not its own consensus mechanism, because uh, chain filter blocks are deterministic functions of previous chain filter blocks and new input blocks. So whatever consensus mechanism the input chain uses, the chain filter will just follow. And uh, these chain filters can be used uh, for uh, realizing uh, user-specific uh, filtering criteria. And uh, so these are also uh, of course, the uh, use cases of uh, off-chain computation, but uh, unless the Bloom filter try, they are user-specific. And the other primitive I would like to show is called the uh, observer chain. An observer chain belongs to a single node, a single light, ser light server, and it is also validated by a single signature. And what an observer does is that uh, it uh, processes multiple observed chains, and uh, creates observer blocks that contain the 
uh, new latest heads of these chains. And uh, it, the cha observer chain is also backed by a security deposit at a judge contract, and the observer has to uh, defend the validity and availability of these uh, chains, or at least the latest actions of them, uh, on a request. The observer chain can uh, follow uh, public chains, private chains, uh, state channels, chain filters, and either, even other observer chains. And now let's see how uh, we can realize a, a filtering and observing hierarchy with these primitives. Here's an example scenario where there's a public chain and two state channels, and the user has uh, its own uh, chain filters uh, defined for all three of them, which are called my events. And uh, these chains and chain filters are processed by higher servers, servers one, two, and three in this case, uh, who give certificates about uh, the validity of the input chains and also the results of the users' uh, chain filters. Maybe in some case uh, it would be enough to just hire a few servers and collect the results, but it is possible that we have such a huge hierarchy and we want to observe so many chains that uh, we might need additional layers of servers. In this case, there are servers uh, four and five who are observing the observer chains of servers one, two, and three, and run their own chain filter called collect events that could uh, filter and collect all the interesting events for our client. So the client can very conveniently just contact the last layer of uh, helping servers and uh, receive uh, just the interesting results. Uh, of course, we need some uh, redundancy to make sure this uh, system works cor correctly. So if we have multiple paths uh, leading to every interesting chain or chain filter, then uh, the client can always detect if it receives different results from uh, different directions, and then uh, it can try to investigate uh, the the observer chains and the chain filters of, of the, its highest servers, or maybe raise an alarm and uh, notify about other clients about uh, a suspected fraud. Uh, and eventually, if uh, there seems to be a fraud, then start an interactive validation process to try to prove it. All of this is, of course, quite far from the original idea of the light client, but I believe it uh, still uh, fits uh, pretty well uh, with the uh, philosophy of uh, what uh, the original light protocol is based on, because uh, the idea is that in this uh, massive world computer ecosystem, there are nodes with very different capabilities, and uh, small entities will always require help from big bigger entities. And uh, what we can do to avoid the concentration of power is that uh, we can create uh, a standardized protocols that make the bigger helper entities interchangeable and therefore create a liquid market of services so that uh, whenever someone wants to stop providing services or raise their uh, prices very high, then other servers can just take over and uh, no one can stop them from doing so. So we can ensure a, a co continuous service with uh, reasonable prices and uh, and also, we can uh, still provide security, not with the uh, regular uh, Merkle-proof uh, Merkle proof like in the classical light client, but uh, we can uh, still uh, uh, increase the cost of an attempted fraud by using security deposits and also reduce the risk of a successful fraud by using multiple paths and uh, detecting any attempted fraud right away. Of course, uh, the there are still some details that are not worked out, and uh, right now uh, our main development priority is still the making the classical light client uh, reliable and usable. But uh, when setting the directions of uh, new development, it is always important to keep, keep uh, the future challenges in mind and the long-term goals. And I think the long-term goal is uh, a massively scalable, high-performance work computer that even small embedded and mobile devices can safely access. And uh, I believe that in this uh, massive, uh, in addition to the massive chain hierarchy that uh, provides a global consensus, uh, the, the client-specific uh, observing and filtering hierarchies 
uh, belonging to these unique perspectives of some applications will be equally important in this ecosystem. And I hope you found my own unique perspective on the future of Ethereum interesting, and thank you for your attention. Thank you.